Welcome to National Gun Trust's ATF eForm1 video walkthrough guide. Thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going over the ATF eForm1 for an individual applicant. Our ATF eForm1 video walkthrough guide will go over page by page for an individual applicant. In order to start the ATF eForm1 application, you will need to have registered your account on the ATF's eForm website. If you haven't done so yet, please do so before continuing with this video. There's a link to our ATF eForms website registration video walkthrough guide in the video description below. Step 1. Logging in. You will need to navigate to the ATF's eForm website by going to the URL https colon slash slash eforms.atf.gov or depending on your browser, you can navigate to simply eforms.atf.gov. The page is divided in half. The login area is located on the right side of the screen. You will enter your user ID that was emailed to you by the ATF when you registered for your account and the password that you used at the time of account registration. Then you will click the blue login button. You may see a spinning icon at this time, and this is normal. Step 2. Starting your eForm1 application. In the middle of the screen, you will see the available forms that can be used using the ATF's eForm website. Scroll through the carousel of forms until you get to the first green form named Form 1 ATF 5320.1. Double click this icon and your form will start to load. Once loaded, you will be able to check the appropriate applicant type and start the application. In this case, for an individual applicant, you will select the individual radio button and click Next. Screen 1. Form 5320.1 page. This screen will display the intended use form and the special instructions. Filing as individual instructions state, the applicant must attach a digital photo in the photo function on the responsible person tab. The applicant must also provide his or her fingerprints on form FD-258. The fingerprints will be submitted separately from the application. Upon submission of the application, the eForm system will email a cover sheet to the applicant. The cover sheet is to be printed as it will provide the control number of the transaction and the address where to send the fingerprint cards. The cover sheet and fingerprint cards must be mailed to the NFA division within 10 business days of filing the application. We will then again click Next to advance to the next screen. Screen 2. Application page. This screen is where you will indicate that you are paying the $200 tax to make an NFA firearm. You can leave the control number box empty and click Next. Screen 3. Applicant page. The applicant page is where you will indicate your information as an individual applicant and the maker's questions that are normally located on page 2 of the paper ATF Form 1 application. Your first name, middle initial, last name, and address should have been populated automatically. If you're making a firearm at a different address than what is indicated, you can type that in here as well. You may need to indicate your cadence if applicable. The title of the submitter of the application for an individual applicant will simply be Owner or Maker. After that box is completed, you can scroll down to answer the maker's questions. You will answer each question by selecting the answer from the drop-down menu located next to each question. The options are either yes or no. Note, box 13.D.2 will need to be completed. If you don't complete this box, you might get an error on this page indicating that this field wasn't completed and does contain a NA option, and click Next. Screen 4. Responsible Persons page. On the Responsible Persons page, you will enter your information as an individual. Normally, you will start left to right completing each column one at a time. There are 22 different columns that you will need to go through. The last column is UPIN. In order to see the last column, you may need to use the scroll bar that is located at the bottom of the table or zoom out to see the columns. This depends on your browser. The columns are self-explanatory, so we will only briefly describe them and common mistakes for the columns where applicable. Box 1, Citizenship. This is your current citizenship. Box 2, Cadence. This is your cadence if you have one. For example, junior, senior, second, third. If you don't have a cadence, you can leave this box blank. Box 3, Title. This is your title. This might be automatically added. Common examples for an individual include owner, maker, etc. Boxes 4 through 8 should already be completed based on your account information. Box 5, Middle Name Detail can cause an error. If you wrote your full name in Box 6, you will need to change Box 5's default initial only to full middle name. If you have no middle name, you can also select no middle name from the drop-down in Box 5. 
Box 9, Form 5320.23, will be grayed out and unavailable for individual applicants. This is normal, because individual applicants do not submit an ATF 5320.23. This is only used for corporations, trusts, or other legal entities. Box 10 will be where you will upload your digital passport style photo. You can select Choose File to navigate to your digital passport photo. This file can be a JPEG or GIF file, but must be under 3 megabytes in size. While your passport photo is uploading, you may see a spinning clock that indicates your photo is being uploaded. Box 11. Social Security Number This is your social security number and isn't required. However, entering your social security number will aid your background check and is recommended by the ATF for that reason. You won't need to include the dashes. Box 12. Zip Code This is the zip code of your address. When you write in your zip code, Box 13, State, and box 14 should be automatically completed. This may trigger the spinning loading icon and may say fetching data while loading your zip code. If for some reason they aren't automatically populated or there is an issue, you can manually fix box 13 and or box 14. Box 15, street. This is the street number and street name of your address. Box 16, date of birth. This is your date of birth. The acceptable format is month slash date slash year. There is also a calendar and clock icon next to the field that can be used to open up a date picker to select your date of birth. Box 17, Birth Country. This is your country of birth. Box 18, Birth State. This is your birth state. If your birth country is not the United States, then you aren't required to enter a birth state and this box will be grayed out. Box 19, State of Residence. This is your current state of residence. Box 20, Sex. This is your sex. Box 21, Race. This is your race. Box 22, UPIN. This is your UPIN. If you don't have a UPIN, you can leave this box blank. Once completed, you can scroll through the table to verify your information was entered incorrectly. If you need to upload a new photo, you can do so at this time. After you have verified your information, you can click Next. If you have missed one of the 22 boxes, you will receive an error before navigating to the next screen. You can then update that column and then proceed to click Next. Screen 5. Clio Page On the Clio page, you will enter in your Clio information. The agency or department name is the Clio's agency name or department. For example, Cooper County Sheriff's Office. The name of the agency official will be the Clio's name. The title of agency official is the Clio's title. In our example, this will be Sheriff. We will lastly fill in the mailing address of the Clio. You will need to write in the mailing address of your Clio and the zip code. When you enter in the zip code of your Clio, the state, city, and county field should populate based on the entered zip code. You don't need to enter in the plus 4 for the zip code. That isn't required. Once this is completed, we can click Next. Screen 6. Line Item Page for an SBR The Line Item Page is where we will add the firearm that you're going to make. In this example, that is an SBR. You will start by clicking the Add Firearm button located above the table and to the left. This will load a new window where the information from the firearm will be added to the eForm1 application. We will start by typing in the manufacturer. In our example, we will be using Palmetto State, but you will use the information that is engraved on the firearm. The drop-down will start to load while you are typing, and you may need to wait a few seconds to load the manufacturer options if the site is running slow. You will select the manufacturer from the drop-down and then click Verify Manufacturer. After your manufacturer has been validated successfully, you can click OK in the new window to proceed. We will then select the manufacturer country and click Next. The second screen will load the firearm details. Unless you are making an 80% lower, then you will use the information that is currently engraved on the firearm itself. We will click the product type drop-down and select short-barreled rifle. You can also select other types of firearms that you're going to make from the drop-down that isn't a short-barreled rifle. Once the short-barreled rifle drop-down is selected, this will then load the available models based on manufacturer that you selected on the previous screen. You will select the model that is engraved on your firearm. If you select a generic model, for example AR-15, and the engraved model on your firearm is actually different, then your application will be denied. In our example, we will select Freedom 15 because that is the model engraved on our example firearm. Then we will be able to select the caliber and unit of measure from the drop-downs. 
If your firearm is engraved, multi-cal, then you will need to select a caliber that you intend to make from the dropdown. If your caliber isn't in the dropdown, then you can select My Item Description is not in the list, Create New Item. But note when this box is selected, your application will go into the pending research phase and will need to be manually reviewed by the ATF which can extend the timeline for your application. The length of barrel will be the length of the barrel of the SBR that you want to make in inches, not the current barrel length. The overall length will be the estimated overall length of the firearm that you are making in inches. This is measured with the stock fully extended and any removable muzzle devices removed. For the length of barrel box and the overall length box, you won't need to write in the word inches or the symbol for inches. Just the numerical value of the measurement will be sufficient. You will then, lastly, write in the serial number from the engraving on your firearm. The description box can be left blank. If you want to add description details, you can. You will need to state why you intend to make firearm. The most common examples are investment and all other lawful purposes or all lawful purposes. Other reasons may be valid, but those two are the most common. Then you will click next. On the third screen, you don't need to upload an electronic document on this page. But on this page, you can look to the right side and under the blue box labeled Step 3. Below this, you will see the line item summary. This is a great way to review that everything you entered on the previous pages are correct. Please take a minute to verify that your information is correct. If this isn't correct, you can select back and make the necessary changes. If your entered information is correct, you will then click finish. You will then see the added firearm as a line item in the middle table. If you notice a mistake with the information of your firearm, you can select the paper and pencil icon located to the right of the serial number to make any changes. After you have reviewed the information from your firearm and confirmed that it is correct, you can select next. Screen 7, Electronic Documents page. Individual. The Electronic Documents page is where you can upload additional documents that are relevant to your application. This is most commonly used for corporations, trusts, and other legal entities. As an individual applicant, you aren't required to upload any additional documents here. You may or may not see your passport photo within the table. This means as an individual applicant, you can simply click next through this screen. Screen 8. Certify page. The certify page is where you will need to certify, pay for your application, and sign and submit your application. If you didn't select the My Item Description is not in the list, Create New Item on the Line Item page, then you should see a green check mark stating that the application has been validated successfully. If you did select the My Item Description is not in the list, Create New Item on the Line Item page, then you should see a yellow triangle stating that the model or manufacturer that you have indicated is either unknown or is not listed in the ATF reference tables. ATF will have to validate the information that you provided prior to rendering a decision on your application. This may extend the average processing time for this application. Both will allow you to proceed if you don't have any application errors. If you have any application errors, you will also be told this here with red links to the pages that need to be fixed. If you have no errors, you can select the radio button next certify. Next, you will need to click the pay button. This will open up a pay.gov pop-up that you will use to pay for the $200 tax stamp. If you have a pop-up blocker enabled, you may need to disable that in order to view the payment window. You will need to follow the steps in the pay.gov pop-up that are self-explanatory. Once your payment has been submitted, you will see a window indicating that your payment has been successfully submitted and that you can now close the payment window. This will then allow you to click the sign and submit button. You will lastly need to confirm your submission by typing in your ATF eForms account password. After you click submit, you may see the spinning icon at this time while your application is being submitted and this is normal. Mailing Instructions We will now discuss the ATF eForm 1 mailing checklist. After submitting your application to the ATF, the ATF will email your cover sheet and your ATF Form 1. If your application had a yellow triangle on the Certify page, then your application will start in the Pending Research status. This means that your ATF Form 1 that was emailed to you will be watermarked draft and the cover sheet won't have a valid control number or serial number. In this case, you will need to wait for the ATF to review your application. Once your application is reviewed, the ATF will change your application from Pending Research to Submitted. 
At this time, you will receive another email from the ATF with your ATF Form 1 watermarked Submit It and a valid cover sheet. This will be the time that you will be able to mail your cover sheet, fingerprint cards to the ATF, and mail your CLIO paperwork to your CLIO. This can take the ATF up to 150 days to change your application from pending research to submitted. If your application had a green check mark on the certify page, then your application will start in the submitted status. Your cover sheet will have a valid control number and serial number. The below items will be sent to the ATF after you have received a valid cover sheet from the ATF. The valid cover sheet. Two fingerprint cards for yourself as an individual applicant. You should mail your cover sheet and fingerprint cards to the ATF with shipping method that offers a tracking number to ensure that your package was delivered. You will only have 10 business days to have your fingerprint cards and cover sheet to be delivered to the ATF. Your application may be denied if the ATF doesn't receive your cover sheet and fingerprint cards within the 10 business days. The below items will be sent to the CLIO that you named within the application. The CLIO copy of your ATF eForm 1 that was emailed to you. You won't need to send any FD-258 fingerprint cards to your CLIO. You don't need to ship the CLIO copy of the ATF eForm 1 with tracking. After your cover sheet and fingerprint cards are received by the ATF, your application is considered to be submitted. Once approved, the ATF will email your application tax stamp to the email address from your ATF eForm account. The ATF won't send you a physical tax stamp. This completes the ATF eForm 1 Individual Applicant ATF eForm 1 Video Walkthrough Guide. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any further questions, you can email us your question using the link in the video description. Reach out to us on Reddit using our account u slash National Gun Trusts or by simply leaving a comment below.